I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Hey there, everybody. It's Dr. Roto. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. All right, a lot of things I want to talk about here. First of all, I want to talk about last night's game, the Monday Night Massacre. New Orleans beats the Redskins 43-19. to Drew Brees breaks the uh, record on a 62-yard touchdown, 26 for 29, 363 yards, three touchdowns. You always start Drew Brees when he's at home. He's a must, like Ben Roethlisberger. I think, though, if you own Mark, uh, Alvin Kamara, you are very upset right now, and I understand that. I get why. I 100% understand it. I mean, Alvin Kamara had six carries for 24 yards and three receptions for 15 yards, and you're, you're befuddled. You're like, why, why is this? This is the way that I'm going to say it. I believe that Kamara had more carries than the, the Saints wanted him to have the first four weeks. They knew he was on bye next week. And I think this gave him a nice little breather. And it gave Ingram a nice way to come back. Right? It was like a soft landing. I didn't expect this to happen. But now that it happened this way, it makes total sense why it happened. I get it. So if you own Alvin Kamara, right now I think you want to panic. Oh my God, what am I going to do? He can't do that. Don't worry. Okay, first of all, the Saints are not going to be beating teams by 25 points. If the games are close, you know you're going to see more Kamara. If there's a route like this, you may see more Ingram. That's true. That is true. But I think that you will obviously see more Kamara. You know what? You also didn't see a lot of Michael Thomas yesterday. Yesterday, You saw way more Traquan Smith and Cameron Meredith. Right? You saw a lot of uh, Benjamin Watson and Josh Hill. So you saw the Saints firing on all cylinders. Okay? For Washington, you saw how bad Alex Smith really is. He sucks. He really sucks. I can't put it any other words by that. That Washington gave up Kirk Cousins and brought this guy in. The, the whole, everybody should be fired. Seriously, start over. You, you're terrible. Adrian Peterson injured. Thankfully, he gave me just enough points so I could win a league. But now he's injured. Chris Thompson was terrible. Paul Richardson was hurt. Jamison Crowder, they missed him all the time. And Jordan Reed won for 21. I tell, never, never put any time that Alex Smith is your quarterback. You don't want anybody in this team. You just don't. All right, other news that we need to talk about. Jay Ajayi. Jay Ajayi out. ACL. What does that mean? Well, it means that you're going to see Wendell Smallwood and Corey Clement. I had liked Corey Clement when the year started, and I tried to draft him all over the place, and I'm glad that I did because you can't get rid of this guy. And I know a lot of people didn't want to draft him in Vegas right away because he was uh, not great week one. Yeah, look, I never liked Jay Ajayi, ever. So that worked out. Jamal Charles is working out for the Jaguars. Let's not go crazy on him. I'm sure somebody will pick him up. This is TJ Yeldon's team. Now, TJ Yeldon should get hurt. Now we're on to something. Okay? Now we're on to something. Deshaun Watson, there's an injury here with a chest, but I'm not so worried about it. Uh, they're playing the Bills. You know, let's just see what happens here. Maybe he misses it, but I think they need this win so desperately. But I, I certainly don't want to play the game with Brandon Whedon. That's for sure. I don't want to play this game with Brandon Whedon at all. All right, let's go digging into the box scores. Let's see what we can come up with here. For the New York football giants, what I'm seeing here is the fact that uh, Odell Beckham had 14 targets. He complained. He got 14 targets. Boom. Sterling Shepard only got seven. I want more targets for Barkley and fewer for Beckham. I want about 10 for Beckham. I want eight or nine for Shepard. That's what I want. For Carolina... DJ Moore, four for 49 and four targets. He's starting to get more involved. If you can lay some hands on him, I'm really interested in what he looks like, okay? For Denver, Emmanuel Sanders had 14 targets. Demarius had six. Sutton had six. Philip Lindsay had four. Even Royce Freeman had four. But they were behind by so many, they were just throwing the ball in the second half. For the Jets, it's really hard to, to buy into Robbie Anderson when he had five targets. Nobody else had more than four except for Jermaine Curse. That's terrible. All right, Cincinnati and Miami. Do you know that Kenyon Drake had more targets 
had 11 targets. Frank Gore had 12 carries. Frank Gore is getting 12 carries. Kenyon Drake got six. Well, no wonder Miami's losing. Kenyon Drake went, had 11 targets. He had seven catches. Albert Wilson, five. Amendola, three. Gaiseki three. Stills, two. Jakeem Grant, zero. Now, if Devontae Parker is gone, which they want him to be, you may see more Jakeem Grant. You may see more Albert Wilson. If they're on the waiver wire, they might be interesting. I think this lowers Kenny Stills, though. Kenny Stills is always better when there's another better receiver near him. For Cincinnati, Tyler, A.J. Green, 10 targets. Tyler Boyd, 7. Mixon at 4. Uzoma only had 2. He caught both, but he only had 2. I expected more. For Pittsburgh, Antonio Brown had 13 targets. Connor had 4. Schuster had 4. Not to, Ryan Switzer had one, McDonald two. I knew this wasn't going to be a tight end game. When it's a James Conner game, you don't need it to be a tight end game. So think of it that way. Atlanta's very good, very bad at stopping the running backs from catching the ball. So you can't have both guys. It's one or the other. For Atlanta, though, Austin Hooper had 12 targets because the Steelers are terrible against tight ends. Muhammad Sanu had seven. Julio Jones had nine. Calvin Ridley only had five. You know, if you own Calvin Ridley, you, you were expecting big games, but the big game here went to Sanu and Hooper. That's troubling. It's troubling. All right, for Kansas City, Travis Kelsey had eight targets. Sammy Watkins had eight. Tyree Kill had seven. Those are the numbers we'd like to see. Nice job dipping it up by Patrick Mahomes. Kareem Hon only had two. I would like to see more there. For Jacksonville, do you know Dante Moncrief had 15 targets? Cole had 10. Yeldon had 10. He is a beast moving forward, by the way. DJ Chark had four. Niles Paul had nine. And James O'Shaughnessy had six. So there were 15 targets to tight ends there for Jacksonville. Let's keep an eyeball on that with Austin Safarian Nightmare out. Right? He's gone. Niles Paul, seven receptions on nine targets. That's very interesting to me moving forward. All right, for Detroit, Kenny Galladay had nine targets. Tate had seven. Marvin Jones only had four. I know he had a touchdown, but not too many targets. Galladay and Tate are the guys you want to own. For Green Bay, there was just 52 attempts. So, I mean, it's, it's not really a fair thing. But what I want to look at is Ty Montgomery only had three targets. Aaron Jones had three. Jamal Williams had four. Jamal Williams had more targets than Aaron Jones. That's troubling. Marcus Valdez-Scantley, though, looked pretty good, as did Equinemius St. Brown. So those are young guys. So if Randall Cobb is not there in the future, you could absolutely see Green Bay go with Adams, Allison, Valdez, Scantling. That could be their trio moving forward. Really could be. All right, for Cleveland, Rashad Higgins is going to be out for a while. Jarvis Landry had 10 targets. David Joku had 11. Derek Willey, some dude I'd never even heard of before, had five. Maybe he's somebody to watch. I get the Willies when I talk about Derek Willies. One moment, please. Let me see who this guy is. I really have no idea who he is. He went to Texas Tech. That's always interesting. And this is his first year. But I like guys who went to Texas Tech. But at Texas Tech, he really wasn't that special. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Hugh Jackson knows something I don't. I'm not sure about that because he's not too bright. All right, for Baltimore, Michael Crabtree had 12 targets. John Brown had 14. Snead had 7 Buck Allen had eight, and then everybody else. The, the, the tight ends were not that involved. Andrews, very few. Nick Boyle, few. Mark, Max Williams, Hayden Hurst. They didn't have as many as they had the week before against the Steelers. Remember, the Steelers, terrible against tight ends. All right, Buffalo and Tennessee. I can't even believe I'm talking about this game. Kelvin Benjamin had five targets, caught one pass. I mean, really, he's borderline. I cut him in a league, to be quite honest with you. Cut him. Zay Jones had four targets. LaShawn McCoy had three. For Tennessee, Tywan Taylor had five, but he wasn't in the game that much. Deion Lewis had four. Tajai Sharp had four. Corey Davis only had six targets. And I know Tredavious White was there, but seriously? Come on. He's not that. He's, Tredavious White is good. He's not that good. All right. For the Chargers and the Raiders, Martavis Bryant only had three receptions. Jalen Richard had six. Jordy Nelson had four. Seth Roberts, seven. Jared Cook, six. But I think the number I want to talk about here is Amari Cooper. He had one target. When he doesn't get fed the football early on in the game, he is disinterested. Completely disinterested. He's got to get the football early on to stay motivated. And that's a problem. For the Chargers, Keenan Allen had nine targets. He had eight receptions, no touchdown. 
Melvin Gordon at four, Mike Williams at four, Tyrell Williams at three, Eckler at three. He spread the love around to other people. I really want to see Mike Williams step up there and be the, the real number two. If you have Eckler, Eckler's going to have much bigger games. He didn't need to have a big game because they were beating the Raiders so handily and they didn't play him that much. All right, for Arizona, man, I think this is just a mess. This is just a mess right now. They brought in Kendall Wright. Larry Fitzgerald's getting three targets. David Johnson's getting three targets. Christian Kirk, four. Chad Williams, six. I mean, against the 49ers, are you kidding me? I don't know if I want to own anybody on Arizona except for David Johnson. i got to be honest with you. I regret taking him number two overall in the Beat Dr. Otto League in Las Vegas. I regret it. For San Francisco, Kyle Juszczyk had seven targets. Pierre Garçon had 12. He's, he's in play when Marquise Goodwin is out for sure. Trent Taylor had eight. He had seven receptions, but they were behind. When they're ahead, he never plays. George Kittle had seven targets. I do like him. Now, with Bryda out, you'll see more Alfred Morris. Does that mean you'll see more Trent Taylor? I don't know. Not sure about that. For the Rams, Robert Woods had seven targets. Cooper Cup had nine. Uh, Brandon Cooks, as you saw, out with a concussion. Josh Reynolds stepped in. I thought he looked pretty good on three targets. He'd be the guy that I'd want to own there. For Seattle, Tyler Lockett had five targets. David Moore had four. Four targets. Nick Vanette had four. Doug Baldwin had one. Brandon Marshall won. So David Moore, absolutely a guy you want to think about. And Mike Davis had 12 carries. Even though Chris Carson had more, Mike Davis looks like a guy you cannot stop. He looks really good. All right, for Philadelphia, I believe Wendell Smallwood will be more involved. He had three carries. I think you're going to see Corey Clement. I think you're going to see them split carries, maybe about 10 each. And I think they'll both get about three or four receptions a week. I think Dallas Goddard might step up here. Step up here. And Nelson Aguilar. These two guys have to step up and help Zach Ertz out. We know what Jeffrey can do. We know what Zach Ertz can do. I think this is going to be a throwing team. I think Carson Wentz is a really good guy to own, and I recommend you guys getting him right now. For Minnesota, Latavius Murray, I can't even watch this anymore. This team is lost without Dalvin Cook. Absolutely lost. Diggs had 11 targets. Thielen had 10. They are the beasts. Kirk Cousins looks phenomenal. Just keep going to those guys. I mean, that's why they're third-round players. Finally, Houston against Dallas. Zeke Elliott had 20 carries. Uh, He had seven receptions. I mean, he touched the ball 27 times. What more can you ask for? But the rest of the receivers, Tavon Austin, one. Rico Gathers, one. Deontay Thompson, two. Blake Jarwin, one. Beasley, one. Gallup, one. Hearns, one. Jeff Swaim had three. They're not going to their receivers. It's a mess. Houston, Alfred Blue had 20 carries and eight receptions. So what does that tell you? It tells you they want to give the ball to their running back, except that Lamar Miller's not very good. Ryan Griffin had six receptions. That's a big number. Kiki Kuti had six receptions. DeAndre Hopkins is just the best. 13 targets and nine receptions, including that one at the end. But Will Fuller only had two. I'm a little worried about Will Fuller moving forward. Kiki Kuti's presence hurts Will Fuller, and that does worry me. It really does. I like Wolf Fuller, but I think he's only good for one or two big plays a game. Got to be careful there. All right, but right now it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. I'll be back on Wednesday with Waiver Wire Wednesday. But in the meanwhile, I want you to go to ScoutFantasySports.com. Ask me and Ronis and Sean Childs any questions that you have. And, of course, ScoutDFS.com. Check out our optimizer. You want to win big money in DFS? Sean's got the great plays in there. He tweaks that that optimizer every week so you can win big money. All right, guys, this is Dr. Roto saying be well and take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!